Awesome. Wonderful. It's another Monday, and we are back again. This is today's Women's COP USA Radio. And you know what the season we are in? We are in the Easter season. And so today we are about to talk about the meaning of Easter to you as an individual and even to us. The eldest of us, thank you all the studio. We salute you. And you know, as always, we have our wonderful mothers here with us. We're about to have a great, great time. So as usual, please call a friend to call a friend and please share and let it be a blessing. And so we have our first lady that is all the way. She's made a long trip for us. <laughs> we have first lady Rebecca Naga. She is the wife of Reverend Elvis Naga. He's the national head for Turkey and Cyprus. And you know, she's worked professionally in the campaign management field. She's marketing and communications in the NGO sector. First Lady is very passionate about music and she loves worship. First Lady Becca Naga, it's a blessing to have you. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's always a great pleasure to be part of this. Thank you for having me. Awesome. God bless you for joining us. And I love your hair. It's Thank you. <laughs> and we're going to go out to Canada. I say it's my next door neighbor, but don't ask me how. I haven't been there yet, but Hopefully soon. <laughs> <Very soon. laughs> we have our, our mommy all the way from Canada, Mama Debbie Engman. She is the wife of Apostle Daniel Engman. He's the area head of North York area in Toronto, Canada. Our mommy has been a former missionary with Apostle to South America. She has a background in early childhood education. Our mommy likes, uh, you know, to be in the helpful field. And also she loves to be a horticultural. Our mommy also has three biological boys and in the kingdom, she's the mother of many. Mama Debbie Eggman, it's a blessing to have you join us again. You're welcome today. Thank you very much. And it is a blessing for me to be here today. God bless awesome. you. Awesome, awesome, God bless you. And back to the US, we have our mama, mama Evelyn Donko. Mama Evelyn Donko is a mother of many and a mother of a son. She professionally has been in the airline business. Our mommy here has been with Apostle National Heads of Norway and Sweden. Our mommy is married to Apostle Andy Donko. Uh, he is former National Head of Norway and Sweden not presently a national executive member. Mummy and Apostle are in charge of the Washington region. Marilyn Donko, it's a blessing to have you join us again. You're welcome to today's woman. Thank you, my the pleasure is all mine. God bless you. And you know, Mama Evelyn and myself, we'd worked uh, in the National Literature Committee in the past when Reverend Johnny Answer was the chairman. So we go way back. Mummy, you're welcome. And Thank you, Mommy. And back to Ghana. We took a trip long over there. And of course, we have our Mommy Dearest here. Mama <laughs> is looking good today. She has some traditional colors on there. And I see some what we call Jeremy. I don't know how that name came about, but it just sounds fancy. We have Dr. Mrs. Abigail Che. She is, you know, with the Department of Nursing. She's been there as a faculty member since 2014. Presently, she is the head of Department for Nursing and Midwifery at the Pentecost University. On the National Street in Ghana, Dr. Mrs. Che is the president of the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives. She's been married for over 37 years to Apostle Professor Peter Ogini Che. He's a past rector of the Pentecost University and also a past area head retired of the Church of Penny because mommy has uh, five children and four grandchildren. Dr. Mrs. Che, mommy dearest, we love you. You're ever welcome to today's woman. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be with all of you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you too. So I am very excited today because today is my daughter's birthday. Three years ago, God blessed me with a beautiful miracle. And it, 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 it's something else. It's a miracle. And so today, it, it's a beautiful day. And I want to thank God for a miracle. But I want to really shout out to Sister Doris Mensa of PRWC New York. She called me. She said, so mommy, I'm going to come do miracles hair. And even though she came, <laughs> wanted to do her hair, she ended up touching up my head too. So Auntie Doris Mensa, thank you. And all the people, so many wishes, so many prayers. My mom called this morning 
So, you know, we named Margaret, we named her Margaret after my mother-in-law and my mom who are both Margaret. So it's just a beautiful, beautiful day for me. And I thank God for the faithfulness, for the faithfulness. So we are back to the business of the day. We're looking at the Easter season. And Mama Abigail, I always love to start with you. So I'm going to the scriptures. I'm looking at Matthew 21, 18, 8 to 11 from the years. It says, most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road. And others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, who is this? And the crowd said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Mama Abigail, for you, even as we, we want to be personal here, and we would love our viewers to know that the views expressed here, our own personal views in no way, shape or form, is that the collective view of the Church of Pentecost. Mommy, from your own personal you know, description, how would you talk to us about the Easter experience? What does it mean to you? Thank you and happy Easter to everybody. We thank God for Easter. Without the Easter story, I don't think our Christianity would be anything. Mm. Mm. To me, what, what I love about Easter is the story about the women. Mm. You know, all through Jesus' journey on earth, I mean, his ministry, his three-year ministry, he had disciples that he worked with. And closest to him were the 12 disciples that he went everywhere with, almost everywhere with. But there were also some ladies who were supporting his ministry. And every now and then you, one name will come up, every now and then one name will come up. But on the day of Easter, that Sunday morning, these women were very serious women. They followed Jesus to the cross. Mm. Bible oh. account tells us that even where the men were standing afar off, these women were standing by the side of Jesus. Mm. The three Marys, his mm. mother, Mark's mother, and then Mary Magdalene. They mm. were standing close mm. by him. Mm -hmm. And mm. when he died, and it was the third day, and they wanted to go and put spices on him, these women boldly went, knowing perfectly well that it was dark. It was very early in the morning. It was quite dark. They also knew that a, um, a stone had been rolled on the tomb. But they did. <laughs> and when they went, here was this angel who was sitting there, whose radiance and presence had made I mean, um, Roman soldiers fall down. <laughs> the Roman soldiers were scared uh -huh. and they were as dead men. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. But these women were bold enough to get there. And even when the angel told them, do not be afraid, which shows that they still had some fear in them, but mm -hmm. they still dared to go. I think that the Easter story empowers women. Awesome. It puts mm -hmm. us in a place that tells us that we are capable of so many things with the help of God. Mm. And it also tells me that if I remember what God has done for me, saving me and bringing me this far, mm. and I am serious mm. with him, there is nothing he cannot help me to do. So oh, as for yeah. me, the Easter story, I feel very liberated Mm. On, on Easter Sunday, you mm. should see me in my, you know, in Ghana, when we are celebrating joyful things, we are in white. Yeah. So you should see me in my white <laughs> and praising, <laughs> dancing to the glory of God because mm. had it not for, been for him, mm. women like me would be nowhere and nobody would even try to listen to us. Mm. But he gave us a voice. Mm. He gave us a uh, a personality. Mm. He gave us the ability to also let the world know 
mm -hmm. that we are capable of doing thanks to his glory. So mm -hmm. the Jesus story to me is a joyful one awesome. that as, as for me, I think it celebrates women a lot and I'm happy about that. Fantastic, fantastic. You know, I was in my white yesterday too. I was having a good time. So mommy, I just resonated. It just resonated with me when you talked about the white and the joy. Uh, it's so beautiful, the empowerment. So thank God for Jesus who didn't marginalize women. He embraced women. That's, that's what I took from mommy, what you were saying. He embraced women in his ministry. God bless you so much. Mama Ebony, I'm just about to come to you. Just from listening to Mama Abigail, which is your experience about Easter, the Easter story from your perspective. I would say without Easter, we would not have Christmas. Mm. Because the two things um, that Jesus did was to appear on the sin and then to prepare himself to die for all mankind. But casting back my mind to Ghana when we used to join processions as kids where people were holding palm branches mm -hmm. and singing Easter songs and marching and just praising God. Mm. Uh, I, I don't see those here in the U.S., but probably in other parts of the world, um, these processions are held in honor of the death, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, mm. signifying that Christians have a hope. We mm. have eternity through him. We see that um, we remember great, the great sacrifice that Jesus made for us um, on the cross in order to save us from our sins mm -hmm. and then to make us candidates of heaven. Uh, mm -hmm. More importantly, Easter um, Sunday helps us to remember that Jesus came back from the dead. He did not yeah. remain in the grave. He came mm -hmm. out of it. Um, although he's not physically among us, he is living and he's alive. Mm -hmm. And presently he's making intercession for us. So the Christmas um, Easter story, um, there's no actually Easter without Christmas. And mm -hmm. then the two, you can't talk about um, Easter without talking about Christmas. And then you can also remember, cast your mind back there. During those times, we used to take palm branches and um, some of us um, folded it into, I mean, molded it into cross. Some of us made so many different things out of palm branches and put flowers in it to just honor Jesus Christ as it was honored when he was entering into Jerusalem um, mm -hmm. that, uh, what do you call it, during those times before the crucifixion. And mm -hmm. that is um, Easter. That is how um, um, I see Easter. Wonderful, wonderful. Very, very nostalgic memories right there just from <laughs> listening to you describe, you know, what we used to mold the palm branches into. Very beautiful, very beautiful. God bless you. Mama Debbie Engman, also from your perspective, what's your Easter experience? Thank you very much. From my experience, I look at Jesus on the cross every mm -hmm. time that one just goes through me and he says, Father, forgive them mm. for they know not what they do. Mm. Wow. Look at what he went through with, with betrayal, with lashings, with suffering, mm. and for him to still say that forgive them. So mm. for me, it's, it reminds me of forgiveness. Mm. That sometimes even if I'm going through certain issues and maybe somebody offends me and I get very upset, I say, hmm, as for this one, may God help me. Then I will remember, he said, forgive. Sometimes it seems like somebody is standing behind me and say, oh, Debbie, how can you shame me like this? Just <laughs> forgive, you know? And then I'll say, oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Oh, and then help me to, yeah, help me to forgive. So for me, it's, you know, it shows that there is nothing that someone would do to me. Mm. Even if it's so difficult and I cannot, when I go to Jesus, he will give me that grace. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That After all, the things he went through, he even mm. forgave. 
Yeah. So what about me? I mean, well, I mean, I haven't gone through one quarter or one tenth of it. So if somebody also does something against me, may God give me the grace so Amen. that I will also have that heart of forgiveness. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for, as I was listening to you all, I would say it's mercy, mercy, Amen. mercy and grace is what it takes. God bless you so much. First Lady Becca, your experience, Easter experience. Thank you. Um, so for me, Easter is a time of reflection. Mm. Just we ask a lot, God do this, God do that. And then when it comes to Easter, it's just a time to reflect really on what Jesus has already done, especially in the times that we're living in now, mm-hmm. where there's so much happening. We're losing a lot of loved ones with corona, with everything that's happening. Easter for me is a time to actually really remember that we're fighting from a winning point Mm -hmm. that although we've lost people although we're hurting Mm -hmm. Christ has overcome death the sting of death is gone Mm -hmm. so these people that we've lost by God's grace we will meet them again and Mm -hmm. we will all rejoice together so it's really a time to reflect on the victory that Jesus has given us Mm -hmm. personal experience I remember in my teenagers I you really used to struggle with um I used to have sleep paralysis okay and the funny thing is that the sleep paralysis would only come when I was trying to get closer to God so a time when I feel like I'm really on fire for God this time I'm praying I'm reading my word I'm there the night I would go to bed I would be attacked with sleep mm-hmm. paralysis and it was the devil's way of really stopping me from getting close to God because in my mind if I am lukewarm, I don't get attacked. So that's a safer place to be. It wasn't until I understood Philippians chapter two, mm-hmm. which says that because of what Jesus did on the cross, right. God has mm-hmm. given him a name that is above every name. Mm-hmm. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow mm-hmm. in that's heaven, right. on earth and under the earth. Yeah. So I think that revelation of what Jesus did mm-hmm. really just rescued me from that attack. It didn't go immediately, but every time it would happen, I knew that I had that name of Jesus because of the cross. Mm -hmm. And so Easter for me is just the victory that Jesus has given me over fear Mm -hmm. and the thing that he has taken away from death in that no matter what I go through, I know that I am fighting from a winning point. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. You know, yesterday, uh, Pastor was talking about resurrection bliss from what you were saying and he was saying that from the winning aspect he said we will he, he was we shall sing hosanna dancing around the throne of glory that there is a time where all who have gone in christ will resurrect and all of us you know he, he was talking about how our bodies will change and the resurrected body and all that it, it felt very good just to you know connect and know that it's not ended with us we die, but we never die. So God bless you so much, all of you mummies. It's just beautiful hearing the dynamics of how you perceive the Easter experience. It is so wonderful. For me, it feels as if the one time that for, for forever, the one time I couldn't be at church for Easter was when I had to have miracle because she chose to come out that time. And I just love, I was going for Easter conventions. And I remember as a young child, we'll all be in the bus and my Easter experience is the songs we sang from the minute, you know, we, we, we used to all meet at uh, Church of Pentecost of Oricrum and then we'll get into the bus and we would sing however long the, the, the distance was. And you have different people just bringing up the songs. different, And that experience, I just love it. And I remember sometimes we would sleep at the like schools where we'll sleep and you wake up at dawn to get a shower and stuff like that. One time, 
we went and um, the Sunday school, my, my group, we, we were in the youth class. We decided we wanted to hang around and I lost my Bible. I didn't have to come and tell my mom that I lost my Bible because I was supposed to be by her side, but I went to hang around my friends and then now I'm coming back without my Bible. So I got the lectures, why you should always stay with your moms. <laughs> I remember that for Easter, but it's always been a beautiful time. It's always been a very beautiful time. So God bless you all so much. You are with us on today's so we'll CFP USA Radio in the chat room. You can also tell us what you miss about your Easter, what has been your Easter experience. Mommy, I'm going to come to you again, Mama Abigail. Christ's journey to the cross. There's a lot of controversy about that. Some say that it happened. Some say it didn't happen. So is, the, is this journey of Christ to the cross, is this a reality? And what will show that it is more Abigail? I, I find it difficult to understand when um, people cannot believe simple truth, mm. but can believe outrageous yes. stories. There are so many stories going on around that you, you, you find it difficult to understand, but people believe that. But the simple story that this is what took place, mm. there's a biblical mm. evidence of it. Mm. And for those who have been able to travel to Israel, the evidence is there. And you see the path where he walked and everything. If it still becomes a problem for people, well, I, I, I can't explain it for mm. them. They, they must have a good reason for not believing it. Mm. But you see, the things in the Bible, the, the, the biblical story, those, if you wouldn't believe any of them, Jesus, in saying those things, also said what would happen after him. Mm. He said, and yesterday, the chairman of the church was preaching on air, and one of the things he brought up was the fact that there is evidence of the things that he said would happen, mm -hmm. which are mm -hmm. happening in our time. That's right. So if right. he said those things would happen and they are happening in our time, it is evidence enough that those things that the Bible reports happened to him really took place. Mm. Because he said that he will bring the Holy Spirit upon us after he has left. Don't we have the Holy Spirit? We do, mommy. Yes. He said we will be able to make disciples beyond our Jerusalem. And we have making disciples where, I mean, look at how far the church, our church alone has spread mm -hmm. into so many countries. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. said that we will lay our hands on the sick and they will get well. And they getting well when we lay hands on them and these miracles happening. Yes. So if that same yeah. person who said those things said they would happen and they are happening now, then how dare I doubt that he really was there as the Bible reports him to have been. So the journey to the cross really took place. Mm. That is my understanding of it. That mm. the things he said, because if any of the things he said would take place after him, they didn't take place, then we go, hmm. So was he really there? Mm. But they are taking place mm. in our own time and we are seeing it. So that alone tells mm. me that the journey mm. took place. Mm. And the, the stories that the Bible tells us about Jesus Christ, mm. his humility, the fact that he was God, I mean, he is God and he came to our level mm. and chose mm. to go through the humiliation that we, the human beings, mm. inflicted upon him. Yes. So that at the end of it all, Bible will be justified in what it says that, that, at, the, that at the name of, in Philippians 2, mm. it says that he went through all this humiliation for our sake, and God 
has chosen to let his name be high above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus, yes. every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And it is happening live in our time. Mm -hmm. So as for me, I mean, in my simple understanding, it took place. Mm -hmm. It was a reality. Mm -hmm. But the things he said would happen after him are also happening in my time. God bless you so much. First Lady Henrietta, you are welcome to the show. Yeah, first lady you had to take care of some business, but we are glad you're here with us. Thank and you. So I'm just going to come to you as well. We are looking at, is this journey to the cross? Is that a reality? What shows that mommy has said so many very, very challenging things to us, especially one thing that stood out to me is we have practical testimonies of people who are not even believers, but even at, at, at the midnight hour, they, they have said, look, I've heard God, if you exist, I've heard these Christians. We have people that are, that are not of our faith. And they say, I've heard these Christians say you can heal. And if you are healer, heal me and I'll serve you. And those people who had diagnosis that says they're about to die have lived to tell their story. So for me, that, that is very profound. God bless you so much, Mama Abigail. First Lady Henrietta, this cross, the journey, is this a reality? God bless you. I think, you know, like mommy said, a lot of the, th you know, we can all attest that we weren't physically there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the question is, and a lot of people ask the question, so what makes it true? Yes. And I think it's quite clear and evident as mommy had explained that what we see, the things that we experience every day in our life attest mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it is in fact true, that mm -hmm. it is in fact true that our savior died and was resurrected. You know, being able to to even have the air that we breathe, being able to to do the things that his Bible, the word has said that we are able and capable of doing, as mommy said, is clear evidence that God is alive. And when when Jesus Christ died, he was resurrected and he came to save us. He's our savior. He came to redeem us. He came to deliver us from this captivity. And so we can see through our own life experiences, not even that alone, but even testimonies in which our forefathers have, 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 have given, and even the testimonies we have in today in our own individual lives, mm -hmm. they confirm in fact that it is true, that it is not something to question, but it is something to accept, as well as the Holy Spirit that lives in us. When mm -hmm. we allow that Holy Spirit in us to activate itself mm -hmm. and allow it to move in our life, mm -hmm. we I then we have that confidence in knowing that it is in fact true that our savior died and on the third day he arose. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And you know, I, I was trying to look at the scripture real quick from what you were saying from what Mama Abigail said about what he, the humility he had to subject himself to the things that he did. And I, I'm in the book of Matthew 26 and I'm looking at all they did to him. And you, you look at them, they're they, they being mean and they're doing all the things, but verse 67, and they spat in his face and beat him. And others struck him with the palms of their hands, saying, prophesy to us, Christ, who is the one who struck you? I'm thinking if, if people are dealing with a thief, they, they deal with a thief, but why are they thinking he should prophesy? You know, like what makes you think that this man needs to prophesy? If you're dealing with a physician, you, you have an expectation. If you're dealing with a teacher, you have an expectation. And they said, prophesy to us. Mama, uh, Debbie, I'm just going to come to you from what first thing Henrietta was saying, the evidence that we have. I'm getting too passionate because she said something about the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said that a good man out of the good in him would bear good fruit. And we believe that by I have said that because Christ died, he made a public spectacle. There, there, there are some things that are very, very interesting, you know, to see in the scripture. And I'm looking at the transformation. She talked about the evidence, the transformation. Mama Debbie, I'm just going to come to you. Is this journey to the cross? Is this a reality? What's true? Uh, you know, very soon I want to acknowledge our people that are with us. We are talking about the Easter story, our personal Easter experiences, and what is the validity of our faith. Call a friend to call a friend, and please share the link and let it be a blessing. Mama Debbie, please, what do you want to weigh in on that topic? Okay. 
Yeah, thank you, Alma Miss. It is indeed a reality. It is a reality. This journey to the cross is a reality because even, you know, there have been many people who have tried to debate it to bring it down, but then they find out that historically, they have searched and they have found out that there was a man who was born who was named Jesus. Mm. And they have spoken about his life. Even those who do not believe went to investigate. And they found out they had spoken about his life, his three and a half years ministry, mm. and then his death on the cross. And, and for me, I would say that it is a reality because I know who I was before. <laughs> <laughs> And I know who I am now oh, because yeah. of me. that's right. Christ <laughs> has come into this life of mine. Mm. And, you know, I would share even a testimony during just this, even this past sister week. Mm. I was going through some kind of strange uh, things, turbulences in my body system. Mm. And uh, God was talking to me. I would go out for work. Sometimes it feels like I can't breathe. I said, God, what is this? I am your child, you know, so whatever is going on, sometimes when I hear somebody has passed, immediately, maybe the shock and uh, the sorrow and everything, it just creates this kind of a burden and stress in my system. So mm -hmm. I was speaking and then I went out for a walk. I told the pastor, I'm going for a walk. And then I started talking. I said, God, you are there and you love us. Mm -hmm. What is this thing that we are fighting? And mm -hmm. then he's and then I had the voice. Sometimes like somebody's walking behind me and said, look, you are in the very best of hands, my hands. Mm. Hallelujah. Trust in me. And I said, I will trust in you, Lord. I want a miracle. Yeah. And amazingly throughout during the whole convention, I said, this is the convention. I mean, I have, I love the Lord, but this time it's a time of looking for healing. I'm mm. one of those people who normally rarely become sick. But I said, Lord, healing. Because by your stripes, you were beaten. So yeah. that I'm free. And I want to experience that healing power. Mm. You know, amazingly, the weight, even though I'm not 100%, but the weight of what was going on, the heaviness and all that, all those things are gone. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. And it, it testifies to the fact that Indeed, he came yes. to the journey. And mm. because of him, we can now cry, Abba, Father. Uh -huh. We can now draw closer to him. And like mm. our mommy said, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, he is there now. He is the one who is guiding us. He's the comforter and the helper. And, and, and isn't it a blessing that because Christ came and he left, he said, I will give you the promise of the Father. And he has. The evidence is so clear for us to see. Amen. 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 Very, very powerful. Very, very profound. This is not what was written. This is not what we've been told. This is personal. It's very powerful. God bless you. Mama Evelyn, you can weigh in as well. Is this a reality? It is a reality. I was um, listening to Mama and I. My mind came up um, to... Matthew 28, 6, that says that he is not here. He is risen. Hallelujah. Just as he said, come see okay. the place where he lay. Yeah. I remember we went to Israel with Apostle of Pokunina, and we had a worship service right there in front of the tomb. And every one of us had to file in to enter the tomb and then came out. When you go into the tomb, you can feel the presence of the risen Lord. And mm. you would see that inscription, he is not here. He is risen. Mm. It's not a host. It's not about Easter eggs and other things that <laughs> people have sort of manipulated the minds of people to think. Mm. And to Christians who are having a doubt, I want you to um, believe the Easter story because the evidence is there. And some of us who have had the chance to go um, look at the tomb know that what the angel said is true. Mm -hmm. He is not here. Jesus' um, death and, 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 and 
resurrection opens a possibility for us to enter into eternity. Mm -hmm. So um, to you who is out there, um, Easter is a reality. Um, mm -hmm. May the Lord lift up your heart during this Easter to yeah. experience this um, resurrected uh, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the miracle of Easter bring you peace if you have any um, disease or if you have any doubt. And I hope that you feel the presence and the love of the risen Lord who um, went on the cross and was his body was broken, tattered, mm -hmm. and, and took all the burden upon himself to die. One of the things that I want you to know is that the first Adam failed us. The first mm -hmm. Adam could not die for us. Actually, the first Adam even made us, the Bible says, a little lower than the angels. So for God to bring back our standard, he has to come in the form of a man to die, to restore us to our falling estate so mm -hmm. that he can, we, can start at, uh, uh, we can stand at power with him. He is now fully man and fully God because of us. So he took on flesh to let us know that there is eternity for us. If you are a Christian who is listening to us this afternoon, have no doubt in your mind. The second Adam did the job and Jesus Christ is alive and making intercession for us on the right hand of God the Father. And he is alive. He lives forever making intercession for us. Have no doubt, Jesus mm. Christ is Amen. alive. Amen. It feels like a sermon. Well, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. First Lady Becca, have no doubt, Jesus is alive. If you want to weigh in as well. I think my mommies have already pretty much said everything. Um, mm. He was prophesied about even before he came. Throughout mm -hmm. the Old Testament, we see what Jesus was going to come um, and do, how he was going to die, specific details about where he will be pierced, vinegar given to him to drink, mm -hmm. and all sorts of things. And I think like everyone else has already said, when Jesus came and he died, the good news or the good thing is that it wasn't in secret. Uh -huh. It was in view of everybody. Everyone saw him on the cross. Everyone saw him being humiliated. So it wasn't in secret. And I love that when he also resurrected, he didn't just resurrect in secret and vanish off. The yeah. Bible says that he revealed himself to over 500 people at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the love of Jesus Christ and the patience of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. is when he came to the disciples and mm -hmm. Thomas was like, it's not you. I don't believe you. <laughs> now take Thomas, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and he just was so patient was so kind and he showed him the piercing in his palm so I think for anyone who doesn't believe like our mothers have already said mm. if the historical proof doesn't convince you if the word of God doesn't convince you then look at your own life just the fact that you have breath just the fact that you are alive just the fact that we have this salvation in Jesus mm -hmm. Christ is evidence that he died, he resurrected, and he's going to come back again. Amen. 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 Very, very beautiful. Uh, I mean, the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 9. After Jesus rose from the dead early on Sunday morning, the first person who saw him was Mary Magdalene, the woman from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went to the disciples who were grieving and weeping and told them what had happened. But when she told them that Jesus was alive and she had seen him, they didn't believe her. Verse 12. Afterward, he appeared to the 11 disciples as they were eating together. He rebuked them for their stubborn unbelief because they refused to believe those who had seen him after he had been raised from the dead. Verse 15, and then he told them, go into all the world. I'm going to jump, I'm going to jump, I'm going to jump. 
the so so I just wanted to add that to what you said that he, it wasn't in secret. He just appeared to a whole lot of people. I'm going to acknowledge people and then I'll come to you first, Lady Henrietta. So you are with us on today's woman. We are dealing with the Easter story, a very beautiful season, a blessed season for us who are believers. I see Mrs. Nanaku, she's the Puma. She says, praise God, wonderful mummies, praise God. We appreciate you for always being out here with us. Deaconess Monica who says here, God bless you so much. She says, good afternoon, beautiful women of God. Good afternoon to you too. And my dearest husband is here. He says, God bless you women of God. Easter empowers women for sure. When men were in hiding, women were running to the tomb of Christ. What would we do without you? God bless our mothers, sisters, and wives. Power to the glory. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we're you right there. <laughs> and then uh, we have our mommy, Theresa Fiancolabi. She's here all the way from Kenya. National First Lady of Kenya. She says, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God, mommy. And then my husband says, well, this, your Easter memories makes me think you want to visit Ghana for an Easter convention. <laughs> <laughs> haven't been away for too long i'm not sure you can relate oh yeah yeah i i sure would love to experience that again and i have deacon stepper best in this year she said jesus as well god bless you so much god bless you and miracle says thank you for what you did for her and i see also deaconess Doreen crowd and miracle says thank you as well i see auntie grace at Jim, she says great day great topic god bless you for being here auntie francisca ampofo says happy glorious easter our beautiful and blessed first lady. God bless you. God bless you. I see also Auntie Magnet, Margaret Daniel. She says, Praise God, mummies. God bless you. God bless you all who are here. Say hi, say hello. Let us know what your Easter experience is. And please share our link and let it be a blessing. First thing, Henrietta, if you want to weigh in as well. I mean, you know, so if I'm um, Eggman says something that's very true. You know, sometimes you have to just look at yourself and reflect on where you were and where you are now. And you yourself can tell something changed you, something and you has switched over. I uh, me personally, I can have, if I look at my own personal life, I know a lot of people who knew me back then and they know me now, they're like, wow, there's something different. And so when you look at when you reflect on your own self and you reflect on where you were, you reflect on the things that you've gone through, you mm -hmm. reflect on even the hardships in which you've experienced mm -hmm. and how you're able to stand today, even to attest to or testify to where you've come from, that alone gives you that reassurance that there was someone, there was something that has taken me out of that. Yeah. And it brought me to this place. We may not be at the top of our game or mm -hmm. at the highest point we would like to be, but where we are even now, there was a certain unction, there was a certain grace that's allowed us to get to this point. And that alone is reassurance for us as believers. And it allows us to have that confidence. So, mm -hmm. you know, for, for me personally, there's no one who can tell me that there is no savior because I know that Jesus came and he saved me. He saved me from the pit in which I was in and he's placed me on higher ground. He yeah. saved me from the poverty in which we were in and he's placed us on stand firm ground. That in and of itself as believers should give us all that reassurance and that confidence that we would not be influenced by the things around us and by the world around us and by the different teachings around us to question our savior who came and demonstrated a love that is like no other. Mm -hmm. And when we think about Easter and we just reflect on the love of God, I mean, sometimes, you know, when you think about it, it's even overwhelming because it's yeah. like, wow, uh -huh. for someone to give themselves up, someone who was without sin, he became sin mm -hmm. for you and I, who were so sinful. There was not any amount of money. There was not enough sacrifice in the animals around that could pay the price, but he gave himself freely. Mm. 
you know, without question, he gave himself up for you and I, that we may once again have that reconciliation with God. So it has this, it, when we think about it, when we read scripture, when we, when we look at our own life circumstances and our situations, it gives us that confidence as believers. And it gives us that firm stand that we will not, be, it, it, it doesn't allow influence to come and, and manipulate us to think anything outside of that. But in fact, indeed, our savior does live. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I was thinking about what you said, you know, that he would give himself freely. Mama, Abigail, I'm just about to come to you as we look at, you know, we had mentioned the themes of Easter in past and to look at it again. But that free, free given, and the, the, that, that unworthy person that the master is willing to die for, that the 99 that he's willing to let go and get the one. And I was just thinking about, even mommy, before the cross, he took his people to go and pray. And he says, my soul is grieved to the point of death. And even there, the selfishness of mankind is shown because they were there sleeping and snoring. I just, I'm adding the snoring. I'm sure they, they were snoring even louder. And I'm just looking at that. Even that moment was speaking volumes for us. Mommy, if you look at the Christmas theme, I'm just looking at that overwhelming sacrifice. And, and like you said, for some of us who have gone through studying experiences in, li in life, just being able to know Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so worthy for him. Not because... that overwhelming love and i just see that sacrifice that doesn't make sense mommy if you can look at the easter themes that you see you see i i always have this analogy about mm. cockroaches and human beings <laughs> i'm curious now <laughs> yes cockroaches and human beings i mean you know how dirty cockroaches are mm -hmm. You know how we look down upon them. Mm -hmm. You know how you wouldn't even want them in your house. Mm -hmm. I see the, the, the relationship of heaven and our humanity here on earth along that line. Mm -hmm. Here is the son of God sitting in majesty the creator of the world. And then he decides to take the form of a human being and come to my depraved body, come in my depraved body, just so he can save me. It's just like a human being, human being saying that, okay, cockroaches need salvation. Mm. And so let's take the form of cockroaches and become like cockroaches and go and save them. That's how I look at it. And even that, I think it, it's even, it's so not enough to explain it. Mm -hmm. So he really came down. He really came to our level. Mm -hmm. Looking at the, look at the things we can do. Mm -hmm. The evil that is going on in this world right now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I see that, and you see now social media has brought the world very close. So yes. a lot of the things that when we were younger, we thought were so far away, we didn't know about. Now it's at our doorstep. Mm -hmm. And you can see how desperately wicked the human mind can be. Yeah. And the things that we can do. But this man, this God, decided to come into that state in which we are and still be with us and so that he can come and save us. Mm -hmm. I can't I can't explain how else anybody can do anything like that. I mean, mm. a lot of us are parents. We will go through every length to save our children. We will yeah. go through every length to um, take them away from harm. But the, the, the reality of the issue is that in addition to everything, God has given us our will. So mm. with our will, we are able to fight him they're able to say that I don't care what you are telling me. It's just like a child telling the parents that I don't care what training you want to give me. I don't think I'm going to need it. 
I'll just do whatever I like. And of course, the mother or the father is standing there looking on, knowing perfectly well that the child is heading towards trouble, mm. disaster. And sometimes you are helpless and you can't do anything about it. And God has given us our will. And look at how we are messing up with it. So, first God, the humility of Christ is what really strikes me. Because honestly, I mean, even in my state now, people that I can, I can um, control, uh, maybe for want of a better word, or people that I, I have, um, I, I, I supervise and things like that. If you are misbehaving, I will put you in your place. I'll let you know that what you are doing is not right. And really talk seriously to you to, for you to amend your ways. I'm not going to spare you. But look at the, the love, the, the, the patience, Mm -hmm. that Jesus has for us. So sometimes when we are going through a mess, he knows that we are going, he's pulling us back, he's putting things in our way, stopping us, but we are still going on in that same direction. Mm -hmm. He still has patience for us. And the, 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 what really breaks me is the fact that no matter how far you go, so long as you come back to yourself, mm -hmm. and you come back to him, he will accept you, embrace you, and lead you on like nothing has happened. Yes. You know, when people hurt me, um, I pray for forgiveness mm -hmm. so that I'll be able to forgive them. Mm -hmm. I pray and pray, and I, I, mean, I'm, I mean, I'm very particular about that because I don't want those people to let me go to hell because <laughs> you say, um, you were unforgiving. So because of that, you're not coming to me. So I won't let them do that to me. So I'll continue praying for for grace to forgive them, grace mm -hmm. to forgive them. But mm -hmm. after I have forgiven, you know, the human being in me still remembers. <laughs> I still remember. <laughs> so it's like, hey, let me be careful. Oh, I don't want another. Yeah. <laughs> but, but with Christ, it's not like that. <laughs> he messes up big time. Oh, and then he forgives <laughs> us. He embraces us, and mm. Bible says that he forgets. Mm. He forgets and forgets. So I mean, I read a story where somebody was saying that, but Christ, you see, the other time I said, where, where is it? I, I can't find it. I don't even know where it is. I, I don't remember. He doesn't. He chooses to forget and lead us. On. So that is the thing about the Easter story too. That really helps me because by dying on the tree, in addition to taking my place, he chose to accept me whenever I come to. And you see that the, the cross and the blood are there to remind us that we can't go too far away. Mm. We can't go too far away, no matter how far, because he, he did the utmost by yeah. sacrificing his life for us. Mm. So that, that love, that humility, that makes him come down to my level to accept even me. Worse off than a cockroach, he has accepted me and is willing to go the extra mile with me so that I will have a place. And you see, the selflessness of God is also another thing that beats my imagination because he did all this so that I will escape the punishment of hell. And come into his glory. And look at me. Me, mom, that is trying to help. Look at what I'm doing. <laughs> Misbehaving yeah. along the way. Doing all kinds of things. And yeah. he's saying, no, cajoling you. Trying to pamper you. Bringing you close to him. Sometimes he brings things your way. So that it will bring you back to sanity and reality. But we are still fighting. And he still has patience for us. This God... As one of my friends said, even if he sucks me, I will not go. I, I'm with him. <laughs> then, 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 not, not, and, I mean, like, because he has, he has done the, the best, the, the bestest best mm -hmm. anybody can do for me. So mm -hmm. I think that the Easter story should let us come to the reality of ourselves, realizing mm -hmm. that here is this selfless God mm -hmm. who wants the best for us. He wants so much, it's so much for us that he has 
agreed to come down to our level in humility so that he'll be able to win us to his side. What else can we do but to give our lives to him totally and absolutely and tell him that, Lord, have your own way with me. I'm with you, ready for the best that you have for me. The humility and the selfless love of God should put uh, and rich trust in us for us to trust him completely with our lives and do what he has planned us to do. Amen, amen, amen. You know, you, you, you said that no matter how far we go, no matter how far we go, you know, uh, I was having this conversation with, with, with my son, Prophet. He, he, he was talking to me. He said, so, some, somebody says something and then he said, mommy, I don't think there's any unforgivable sin with God. And I said, I said, yes, technically, because if Jesus said you can be forgiven anything except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, and I said, yes, because any person who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit is even denying the existence of God. And so that person is not even recognizing him, but all of us who are saved, as soon as we repent, and that's what the scripture in First John was saying, that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. And what is very profound is God himself saying, come let us reason. Mm -hmm. He sees us, he says, your sin has made you as red as scarlet, but it shall be as white as snow. So we were having that conversation, I says, prophet, if God is saying reason with him, and John is saying, once you confess, in the reasoning, it's just us not trying to justify, just saying, God, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And with God, it's over. But, you know, I'm being honest with myself. And I say, man is different because when man has hurt me, I'm hurt, I'm bruised, and I'm mm -hmm. praying, God, help me because, because of his word. So it's the word. God did it for us, not because of anything. There was no condition. But me, it's because the word says, forgive us our trespasses, us, we forgive. So when I go before him, I'm saying, God, please, somebody has to hurt me. And because I need your forgiveness, help me to forgive them. But having done that, when I start with God and I say, God, your word says, guard your heart. So I'm guarding my heart. I don't want to be that again. So it shows me that human beings, it, 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 we are totally different. But God is so gracious because the number of times that we do what we do, we just go and confess and he forgives us. So it's from red he makes it as snow. It's from crimson. He makes it as wool. But with man, I'm here and I'm saying, God, please, I'm God in my heart because I don't want to go through all of that just to come back to you and say, forgive me my trespasses as I forgive others. When you look at the double standard and you see how gracious God is. So, mommy, when you were just saying, you know, saying what you're saying, I just said, God is just merciful with us. God bless you so much. Mama Debbie the themes that you see? Theme that I see, I see one major theme I see is his love mm. for the outcast. Mm. When you look at the fact that he had a goal, mm. he was determined. In his determination, he would go to places where he was treated nicely. If it was me, I would say, oh, let me remain here. <laughs> After all, I'm being pampered. I'm being, you know, forget about the reason why I came. That, you know, I'm in suffer and die. No, I'm being treated nicely. No, but he had a goal. And because of that, he kept that goal in, goal in mind. Mm. It's not for the outcast. Look at the woman, the Samaritan woman he met at the well. Mm. This woman, five where a man had been through her life and the six wasn't even the husband. And mm. if it was someone, the disciples didn't expect Christ to be seen with a woman like that. Mm. Because for us as humans, even though we were also as cast and he has saved us, when we become into Christ, sometimes we look down on the mm. people who have not had that experience. There was mm. this uh, story about a, a minister. You know what he did? He intentionally dressed himself in rags, mm. sat at the door at his church. And people would say, oh, get away from there. You smell and all these kind of stuff. When he was coming into the church, people would say, hey, what is this man doing? And then when he got in there, he actually took off his, you know, the, the, what he was wearing to let them know, I am your pastor. And this is how you treated me. 
because mm -hmm. you thought I was somebody who was a streetless person. Mm -hmm. And so we have, as humans, we have this mentality, oh, he's this, oh, she's this, oh, this. And because of, even in Christ, even mm -hmm. in Christ, mm -hmm. our, the way we think and the way we relate, sometimes we just condemn, oh, these people, they are useless, they didn't do anything. Who knows their story? Mm. Who knows that? But Christ, any and everybody who came to him, he had that patience. He had mm. that grace. And one thing he does that I love so much is the woman was talking about the past. Oh, mm. you know, our, 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 our leaders have told us that one day somebody will come. This says didn't want her to dwell on the past. Mm. He drew her into the present. Mm -hmm. And he said, I am he. Mm. I am he. And then not only that, he also drew her towards her future that go and call your husband. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that there was no husband and she was nah, like, Mommy, that was a technical knockout. <laughs> <laughs> and she was honest. Somebody would have lied, mm. you know, but she opened up and he mm. said, you, were, you are right. So a woman who came to get water she even forgot her water pot after mm -hmm. her encounter with Christ. And she ran to the city. She didn't go to the women because women would suspect. <laughs> but she went to the men and said, come and see somebody who knows all, all about me. So, so, so may God help us so that the, the, the character, we have seen Christ. Hmm. But, but the true character of Christ, let the, the, the encounter so that we will be transformed. Hmm. We will have his heart, like mom said, his humility, his love, hmm. and his care. Amen. 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 God, God bless you so much. You know, I was thinking the woman knows that, you know, she has a good rapport with the men more than the women <laughs> from her <laughs> But you know, and I'm more curious to know that that story is very profound of the transformation that you know had been mentioned earlier on. Because they said not just because of what you told us, but what we have seen for ourselves in a whole town, and, and that's very profound. Because mommy, Mama Abigail, you had mentioned also that Jesus' story is an empowerment for women, and such a woman who was so disrespected because of her history, he would go and give her that glory to be that historian for that town as the person who brought Christ to that town. It's, it's very, very powerful, that transformation. God bless you so much. I'm gonna acknowledge some people and then I'll come and we're going to talk about the significance of the resurrection. How does it, even talking about the woman at the well, we want to continue from that premises, the impact to the believer. And so I have Auntie Gracie from Bon, she says she's watching us from down someone Accra. God bless you so much for you joining us all the way. And Dignus Doreen Crab, um, District uh, Women's Leader for Oklahoma and also Regional Secretary for Texas. She used to always, you know, take care of profit for me. And I always remember her for that. And thank you so much. God bless you. Love to justice and everybody else. Auntie Louise Jackson Henry, thank you for being here. She says, good afternoon, everyone. It's always good to see you. If you're on here, please say hi, say hello, share your issues the experience with us and please please share our link and let it be a blessing never ever the impact to a believer's life even from what our money said from the woman at the well to an, an entire city if you can look at that for us so the significance of his death um jesus christ being god reality is god should not die but because of the love that he has for us, humankind, mm. he decided to come and impact our lives. Not only doing that, but he decided to make sure that death is not something to be feared. He, mm. he made sure that um, Christians will triumph over death. Mm. Taking the story of Esther, mm. she said, if I perish, I perish. Esther was a young woman who did not have children yet, who had been married by the um, king, who was standing in a position that he could, she could um, um, stand in the gap for the whole of Israel. 
because 500 years, the guy who um, was called, um, what was his name? Um, um, Is it? I talk about Esther Heyman, Mordecai Estorio. The guy who was called Heyman okay. wanted to make sure that all Jews were annihilated. Uh -huh. Now, coming back to us, Jesus Christ knows that if he did not come back for us, if he did not come to die to make this impact, to, to, to bring man back to himself, then there was no way we would make it by ourselves. Look mm -hmm. at the Old Testament. Look at the things that people have to carry, the animals that they have to carry. If these days we were asked to bring these animals, wouldn't we be smelling of goats by the time we reach the church? <laughs> when we have to carry, um, what do you call it? Um, the, uh, the, 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 the slaughtered goat mm -hmm. and give it to the high priest. By the time we appear, we have blood mm -hmm. all over us. Mm -hmm. And by the time all these sacrifices are made, should we make any other mistakes there? The mm -hmm. sacrifice that was done for us would have been null and void mm -hmm. so that we would need another sacrifice and another sacrifice again. But Jesus Christ, because of the love that he has for us, went to the cross once and for all. His power over sin and the grave was so great that mm -hmm. mankind has life. Looking at us, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ shouldn't even die for us. Because like Mama Debbie was saying, the things that we do, the things that we, we pride in, are not things that um, God should even look at. But yet he throws all that aside and then comes to our aid, to the extent that he dies for mankind. Jesus Christ's death has opened a new way for us a new way into eternal life for mankind. Mm -hmm. Just like Esther wanted to just put down her life to save Israel. This is what Jesus Christ has done for us to impact our life, to stand in our place. Just like slaves were brought into America in those days and some slave masters bought the slaves but freed them. Some others bought them and put them on plantation to work. And they worked and some even died whilst they were working. But Jesus Christ has brought us back from the slave market and mm -hmm. he has freed us. So okay. no other master would mistreat us anymore. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. I like that analogy. God bless you so much. First Lady Henrietta the significance, the impact to a believer. You had mentioned your own personal, you know, impact even as we are getting to, you know, wrapping up. If you can. <laughs> Women more jazz <laughs> up. <laughs> There she is, birthday girl. Birthday miracle. <laughs> Happy birthday girl. Terrible. I was here when she was doing her hair, so she wanted me to. <laughs> All right. Taking back on what um uh -huh. was saying, you know, when you look at scripture in Romans chapter eight, um, verse one going, it says, Therefore, there there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free mm -hmm. the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, and that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own son and the likeness of a sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin 
and sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. So we just back to what our mother was saying that, you know, when Jesus Christ came, he came and he enveloped us in him and his, his sinless nature came and covered us up as, um, as those of us who, you know, who are sinful, full of sin. And he came and he, he enveloped us. So he's covering us and he set us free from this, this condemnation of a, a sinful life, sinful nature. And, and he, he has set us uh, uh, apart from the things of the world. And so we see that he, when we talk about Christ, when we talk about our Savior, we talk about that freedom, that, right. that, that liberation, that, uh -huh. um, that, that, you know, we're no longer tied to, to the things of the world. We're no longer tied to sin. But through him, in him, we have been mm -hmm. set free. We also Amen. experience the power of God. And mm. the power that was able to raise um, Christ up, the power that was able to resurrect Christ, the power mm. that was over to, able to overcome, um, mm. you know, the works of the enemy. So we yeah. see so many things in this resurrection. We see so many things in Christ. We see that we, as children of God, we have been given a hope. We have been mm. given a chance. We've been given a chance to live and live abundantly um, in yeah. his and in his righteousness so we see all of these wonderful attributes when we talk about easter so it's not something that we just you know dress nicely and i know some people they prepare one year in advance for their easter attire how his love being so great he took us out of all of this like just imagine just such just if you just sit back and just think about it and how him coming and dying for us has given us a chance, has given us a hope, has given us a future, and has given us eternal life. It is a great gift. It is a, it's an un, you know a remarkable gift, and it's something that we shouldn't take lightly at all. Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter two, verse nine. Just from listening to what you were saying, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. You know, that, 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 that really needs to sink in. As humans as we are, we have things that are limitations and I wish I had this, I wish I, I didn't have this. And so we, 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 we don't think we are enough for, we are all that. But I like the fullness of the Godhead, but I like this aspect. You are complete in him. You know, mommy, we're talking about the empowerment of the woman. So that woman who's out there who's thinking, I'm not beautiful enough, I'm not educated enough, I don't have the right, you know, helpers, I don't have the right resources. The one person you need is Christ in him. You are complete. And, and I love the word follow. So this is from the uh, New King James Bible and says, who is the head of all principality and power? So in, in money, it, it's like somebody said, I've got people. You know, some people are like, be careful how you deal with me. I've got people. So <laughs> whether you are an orphan, whoever you are, the person who is the head of all powers, whether it's man-made power, whatever, whatever power that you can think of, whether it's any kind of principality, in him, you are complete. So it's at, at this point that we say weak no more, no matter what we are dealing with. I, I, I just love this that follows what you were saying. And then that scripture talks about when we are baptized with him. You know, I think um, I'm, I'm still in that Colossians chapter two. It talks about we were buried with him in baptism and we, we were raised from him. Uh, we used to be dead in our trespasses. We used to be the uncircumcision. He has forgiven us. And he also nailed everything to the cross, verse 50, and he disarmed principalities and powers. I like, you know, I, the person that taught me uh, literature, mommy, may have so rest in peace, she's dead, but we have one person teaching drama and you never wanted to miss her drama class because as she's reading it, she's dramatizing it. So whenever I read him disarming principalities, I'm imagining Mrs. Kujo may have so rest in peace, how she would have read the scripture. 
disarming principle. And you know, the way she would shake herself, I can just imagine her here reading the scripture. First lady Nagi, I'm just coming to you and then I'll go to more Abigail. In him, you are complete. Even as we are looking at the themes of completion and other themes of Easter. Um, I think that is such a powerful statement. Mm. And it, it just means that there is nothing more I can do. That's there right. Is, he has done it. He mm. has, I am complete in him. Uh -huh. And so somebody is making me feel like I am inadequate. Maybe mm. um, my skin is not light enough or I'm not beautiful <laughs> enough. Or not this enough. The mm. word of God tells me that because mm. of what Jesus has done for me, mm. I am complete in him. And, and for me, the resurrection power is the fact that, or Jesus resurrecting, mm. is the fact that I can now rely on his word. Mm. It means that his words are reliable because mm. he said he was going to die. He uh -huh. said he was going to resurrect. I will, um, what, what did he say? I'm going to destroy this temple. And in three days time, I'm going to build it up again. So uh -huh. if Jesus did not resurrect, then everything else in the Bible is a lie. The yeah. fact that he has risen again and he is saying that I am complete, it means I am complete. That's right. It means that his word is reliable. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite scriptures, um, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, it says, hold on to your faith unswervingly for God can be trusted to keep yeah. his promise. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. that means that everything that God has said about me, my confidence is in the fact that his words can be trusted. Uh -huh. So if he says, I'm complete. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you tell me. I hold to the word of God that says I am complete. And I tell you, I am complete. Amen. Amen. And I will drink to that. I will drink to that. So here, let me do it. <laughs> Which is sad. He says it. And you know, um, we, before we, we've gone to this church where, you know, when the preacher's preaching, then, then, then the, you know, uh, the, the pianist will be behind the piano. and So right there, I am complete. And then I'm just imagining that if this were to be a seven, <laughs> this is the right time. If the person behind the organ or the piano was a play, I said, give me some keys. And my husband says, I am a B. And he is a C. I said, C sharp and B. I am complete. Then, 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 then. We, we, we have to look at what, what, what the yes. word has done for us. Yes. We have to look at what the word has done for us, what the resurrection has done for us. In, the, in this world where the standards can be so unreasonable sometimes, it's just profound that in him, we are complete, not because we have done anything to earn it, but his love is enough. His love is enough. No matter you, the statement, it is finished. In John chapter 19, and I think I just want to go there, even as we are wrapping up, I, I just um, want to go to John chapter 19 and look at that. So verse 30, uh, I, I'm, I'm there before he would bow to, 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 to give up his spirit. Now, um, I, I mean, after 28, after Jesus, John chapter 19, I'm looking at 28. Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of the sponge. So it describes that. But the emphasis, mommy, is on that scripture that says, when he knew that, when he knew that all things were now accomplished. And then I'll jump to verse 30. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. Bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Specific words, mommy, are just standing out here to me. He knew all things were completed. He declared it is finished. And he gave up his spirit. No, how do you go? This statement, it is finished. How does it resonate? And how can we appropriate it in our time? Um. I will, I will answer that question, but there is something about the impact mm. that I, I feel that to share. 
Yes, mommy. Um, the impact of Christ's death. Mm. If we look at it biblically, mm -hmm. we all know who Peter was. <laughs> that scared gentleman <laughs> that even a maid would let him swear yeah. that he didn't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. After the resurrection, when Jesus said he would let the Holy Spirit come upon them, and they went and waited and the Holy Spirit came upon them, mm -hmm. this same Peter stood up and preached and 3,000 souls. 3,000. 3,000 souls were saved. Then we have the story of Paul, mm. who had been persecuting the church, mm. thinking that he was in the right direction. Mm -hmm. He had this encounter with Jesus. And what did we see about Paul? Mm -hmm. The impact of the resurrection. But what really made me want to share is the story of Billy Graham. Mm. There is a story of a group of college students who went to visit the home of John Wesley, founder mm. of the Methodist Church. Yes. They noticed there were indentions on the floor of his room mm. where he mm. knelt to pray each day. Uh -huh. After uh -huh. the tour, the class loaded onto their back. Mm -hmm. But the teacher found that when he counted, one was missing. Uh -huh. He uh -huh. went back through the prophecy looking for the student and found him kneeling in those imprints praying, do it again, Lord, mm -hmm. do it. Understand. Do it again, Lord, do it again. The teacher walked up and quietly tapped on Billy Graham's shoulder to let him know they had to do it. And as for this one, it is not far-fetched. Mm -hmm. Most mm -hmm. of you living in the United States have been there to see the impact of Billy Graham in this world. Mm -hmm. He went back to pray that what God had used on Wesley to do to bring the Methodist Church into being, he should do it again. And God answered, what other evidence do you need about the impact mm -hmm. of yeah. the resurrection? Mm -hmm. Now that said, is finished. It is finished. I was just reading about the fact that in the Jewish tradition, when they, they have a, um, an assignment to be done, when you are given a work to, let's say, a carpenter or somebody to do it, after the transaction is completed, to show that it is completed, the person will fold the handkerchief or um, a wrap, fold it up and put it as a, um, a seal on the transaction that had taken place. And that meant that it is finished. When the disciples, the, the ladies went to the tomb to look for Jesus, mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. of the accounts in the gospel says that the woman got there and when they peeped into the, um, the tomb, mm -hmm. they saw that the clothing of Jesus was there on the floor, but the, what was wrapped around, was used to wrap his head, had been folded and put aside. Mm -hmm. For any Jew who goes and sees a thing like, a thing like that will know immediately that this, some, this is something that shows that something has been accomplished. It is finished. Mm. Wow. And that is what Jesus said on the cross. Mm. After he had gone through everything, you see, the, if, if you look at it um, physiologically, mm -hmm. what was done to Jesus, human beings cannot stand that. Yeah. Because you see, when they nailed him to the cross and then crossed his legs over the other and nailed mm. it, Jesus had nothing supporting his body. Mm. So, like in Jew, we will say, yeah, 
Mm. He was he was suspended on the tree. If you look, you look at the account of the, the, the thieves on the cross with him, they were tied up. So mm. they, 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 could, mm. they could rest on the tree. And, but this man, his hand, so he had nothing to keep him himself together. And he went through that agony. So there was, there was not, I mean, any whatever punishment, it shows how, how God really abhors sin. Mm. So whatever mm. punishment he had in mind for sin, by Jesus going through what he went through, he had absorbed everything, every, he had gone through every, mm. everything mm. that needed to be paid for sin. And that is why after everything had been done, he took the, they, they brought the um, bitter vinegar to him. Mm -hmm. And he took, they put the step on his uh, lips. And then he knew that this is the end. You know, in the Akan tradition, when somebody is about to die, they say, mm -hmm. they were, that, that's the last thing they try to do to see if, if the person will take the drink mm -hmm. and then they, the, the person dies. But this one, so Jesus went through everything, like culturally and everything, it makes sense to us. And then he willingly gave up his spirit because he knew it was sin. Mm -hmm. So by that statement there that says that, and then he gave up his ghost, tells me that he made sure that everything had been accomplished. Mm -hmm. After the accomplishment of that, he said, it is finished. And by his, it is finished, it is finished. Mm. It is finished means it is finished. Mm. It means that th there is nothing else that his death cannot pay for. Amen. There is no sin too big for his death not to pay for. That's so right. no matter how far we go, it still comes back mm. to the love of God and the the selflessness of God and the 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 grand I, I I'm sure of words the grand um, identity he has for human beings. Mm. So he went through to the last end. One man man said that his love is one of the themes that really attracts her. I could seriously identify with her because you see there is who, who loves me enough. Mm. I, 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 there's nobody. <laughs> nobody loves you enough yeah. to do what Jesus did for us. Mm -hmm. So he went through to the last end mm -hmm. and said, let's die. It's finished. finished. Paid mm -hmm. for, accomplished. There is nothing else waiting anywhere. Mm -hmm. So when you trust in him and you believe that he died on the tree for you to take away your sins, immediately everything dark about you everything mm -hmm. sinful about you everything mm -hmm. notorious about you is mm -hmm. wiped off it is finished mm -hmm. it is paid for fully mm -hmm. nobody mm -hmm. can come and stand there and say that you so owe me this or that so mm -hmm. that it is finished part is an accomplishment of what Christ has done for us. So mm -hmm. back to the impact that, examples of the impact that I gave. Mm -hmm. If Jesus hadn't accomplished that, yeah. do you think that we would be seeing some of these testimonies with our own eyes? Mm -hmm. they? I, mean, that, the, I mean, when I read that part about Billy Graham and the passion with which he prayed, mm -hmm. oh, do it again. So if it hadn't been finished on the cross, this wouldn't have taken place. And look at the lives this gentleman went through to save the glory of God. It is finished for us. Mm -hmm. Our sins have been paid for. And mm -hmm. it is our responsibility now to look up to him for grace to be able to accomplish what he has done for us. Because the work has already been finished. We are mm -hmm. only taking we are just 
picking up the glory. We are picking up the victory because he has already accomplished it. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you so much. You know, mommy, I, I was thinking to Telesha in my in my mind the the song to Telesha. It is finished, and you know this elder had a funny way of saying it that Jesus is the one who died. Yes, no, na yengi na. <laughs> it's, a, it's Christ who has died, and we are just the beneficiaries enjoying the spoils. It is finished. Very good. Somebody easy. said that yes, we never will not see emergency. I'm body a crack, crack, crack. Now they are doing it now, but we won't be so busy to do it. And you know, the essence of just listening to this is the love of God. So. Profound. He, he's such a magnanimous, benevolent God, and and every relationship we have with Him, just from listening to you, is more for us. It's everything mm. is about us. He, he puts us first. And if you look at our theme that we're using, and you know, when when Pastor normally when he does um, counseling, and he talks about Christ, and he talks about the sacrificial nature of the love of Christ. That the the what is very profound to me that is a great food for thought is the fact that this love will take care of us when we're not worthy. So he's brought us in. Peter says, "Out of darkness into his marvelous light," and he has transformed us to become the light, so mm -hmm. that we will show forth his light. And then he mm -hmm. says, "But he's cleansing us." Mm -hmm. And washing us with the word. So it's like he's put same gods. So remember when you say it is finished, that's the imagery that came to my mind. He did it. But even after he's done it, he's put same gods around us. So he mm -hmm. says, look, the gates of hell will not prevail. Mm -hmm. And then he, he comes with the word to cleanse us, to wash us for the ultimate. So that we will appear as a bride without wrinkle of blemish. So when you when you when you think about stuff like that, it comes back to say it doesn't matter what anybody else says. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. He says he loves us. Yes. Very very profound. I want to take acknowledgement, and I'll come to you first, Lady Henriette. I'm going to go around and take closing remarks. So whatever you have left to say. Please put it in your closing as we go around because as the conversation is so, so enjoyable, then the time, I, I wish sometimes I can tell the time to, to stand still, like, you know, <laughs> and happen in, in biblical time. So God bless you for being here with us. We are looking at the Easter story. We are looking at it from our premises, uh, our experiences and stuff like that just makes me want to just go into worship because it shows me of how, God chose to see us as people that are dear to him. Mama Mary Pussy is the mother-in-law, First Lady Henrietta. Mama Mary had a recent birthday, so happy belated birthday, Mama Mary. I see also Auntie Julie um, Pohima Jaba, and she says, oh yes, in Jesus, we are complete, totally and beautifully. God bless you so much. My dearest husband said, complete in Christ, it's indeed a powerful sentiment. Please, for those who feel inadequate in Jesus, you are complete. Amen. Amen. And Auntie Ophelia Gracie, woman of God, she said, Who's mama always looking at my friend? Because said, oh, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. I appreciate you being so kind. Auntie Gladys Kennedy, she says, Wow, what a love. Behold, what manner of love the Father has given that we should be called the sons of God. And that is not what I love about the scripture, but that, the, the scripture says, we are indeed. We are indeed. That is just very profound. Somebody typed it to Lester. It is finished in capital letters. First Lady of Fabia Gracie. God bless you so much. And my dear, so people are enjoying too much the donations from Christ's death. <laughs> <laughs> well, mommy, you said it's our but yet my husband says I will enjoy it too. <laughs> the prophets in the house. Professor Kwame gets here. It's good to see you here. Elder Professor Kwame. He says that for him, the way he's come to love Christ, even if you have um greater, some some he talks about greater and some some truck. I forgot how they call that truck. He said, even if you push him with that one. He's not going. Mommy, what do you call it? Caterpillar. 
Uh, yes. He says, even if you try to push him with his caterpillar, he's going nowhere. He loves so he is. God bless you. And I see um, so some people, uh, yeah, I see so many comments as we continue. Um, oh, so my husband says to me, giving up his spirit speaks of Christ's power, even in his moment of weakness to decide when his spirit left his body. I can't imagine what we would do if we had that choice to decide when our spirit leaves our bodies, especially if we can't say we have finished everything. It's very true. Thank God we don't have that power. It shows also the sovereignty of God. That's what came to my mind. He can put down his life and he can take it. First Lady Henrietta, we are wrapping up. It is finished. We are complete. We are loved. We have a a humble God, a sacrificial God. These are some of the conversations we have had so far. A transforming God, even Jesus' death and empowerment to women. What do you want our listeners to take on with them today? Oh, bless you, Sofama, and all of our mommies for your wonderful contribution. You know, to me, when, it said, when Jesus said it is finished, it, it just goes to confirm his achievement um, in the reconciliation between man um, and God. Mm -hmm. And um, he completed that, that task. And mm -hmm. um, there was nothing left to be added. There was mm -hmm. no more work that was needed. Mm -hmm. um, he did it all. And he's brought us back to him. And uh, it is important for us not to um, enjoy it too much to the point where we're not <laughs> uh, allowing it to, to do something in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, we should take advantage of that but we should allow the work and the sacrifice that he displayed on the cross on Calvary to have an impact in our individual lives. Christ mm -hmm. opened the door for us to bring ourselves back to him. Um, and mm -hmm. so doing so by living a life that is holy and pleasing, um, let us mm -hmm. make every effort, every mm -hmm. means within our being mm -hmm. to allow that relationship, which he had restored um, to, to be, to, to live on and, and not be destroyed by the things of the world and be distracted by the things of the world and be distracted by the desires of our flesh. But a lot, mm -hmm. a lot let us allow the spirit of God to live in us and allow this sacrifice that Jesus sacrificed on the cross um, mm -hmm. to bring us back to himself. Let us not allow it to be in vain. Um, so I just want to say, may God bless us all and um, happy Easter to everyone. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. Let's not let that sacrifice be in vain. May God help us. God be in our helper. We will do it. God bless you so much. I want to acknowledge Auntie Helen Bruni. Uh, salute to the family and greetings to your husband and everybody in Ghana. And I see First Lady Rosemary Adu is here. God bless you so much, First Lady. And also Kobe Jimfi of Raleigh. Elder, you know the love is deep. God bless you so much, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your encouraging words. God bless you so much. First Lady Becca Nagin, what do you want us to take with us today? Thank you. I've really enjoyed the conversations, and I have learned so much. So thank you very much. It is finished. For me, is the curtain has now been broken. Mm. I have direct access to God. Mm -hmm. I don't have to call any prophet anywhere to tell me what God is saying mm -hmm. because he is my father. <laughs> I can go to him at any time. Uh -huh. I have his word. I have his spirit to lead me. Mm -hmm. And so that direct access is so, so important. Mm -hmm. And then when I look at the sacrifices that Jesus made, looking at what we've read, what we've spoken about, the pain, the humiliation and everything that he went through. Mm -hmm. The question that I ask myself is then what should be my response? If Jesus has done this for me, then what should I do? And um, my response to that is that I should live for him. Since he died for me, I should now live for him. He's not expecting me to go on the cross and die because it is finished. He's already done all of that but he's expecting me to pick my cross daily and follow him and to present myself to him as a living sacrifice. So it's not just about how you start. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't quit in the middle of it. He went through the pain. He went through the sacrifice to the very end when he said it's finished. So let us also persevere. It's not going to be easy, 
but Jesus has done it and he's given us the grace so that one day we can also say it is finished. We've run the race and we've run it well to the glory of God. Amen. 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 For the good fight, I have finished the race. May it be what we can all say that we are awaiting the crown. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. More Debbie, please will take your closing. Okay. Thank you so very much. And once again, I am really blessed and encouraged. Yes. And um, when you, in my closing, you find that in Genesis chapter three, mm. you see from verse 14 that God pronounced a curse mm -hmm. on man, on the earth, on woman, and on the serpent. Mm -hmm. And the curse was that we will face sorrow, we will face death, we will face pain, we will face suffering, mm. poverty, sicknesses, thorns and thistles, mm. sweat, and we'll be ruled over. Women, we were on a co equal mm. level, but we would be ruled over. And then mm. there will be enmity, there will be bruising, there will be desire, and many, mm. much more. And Mercy. Christ had to come and break the curse. Amen. God himself saw that the weight of that case was too much for us. Yeah, and so, so when Christ came, specifically, if we look at it, he had to wear the thorns on his head mm -hmm. so that he would let us know that these thorns, that the case of the thorns has been broken. The Amen. thorns were hit into his head and blood dripped from his forehead. And that mm -hmm. blood that fell on the ground broke the curse that had been put on the ground. They said, man, we will struggle and suffer just to make ends meet. So the, the curses that were pronounced, Christ had to go to the rejection. His clothes had to be taken from him. And his mm. clothes were even, you know, uh, uh, people, the, the soldiers pawned his clothes among themselves. All these things Christ did so that the curse will be broken. Not only that, but he will bring us back to the Father. Not only that, but he will give us his spirit, which will give us power, that we will cry, Abba, Father, and God will hear us. So like our mommy said, we are going forth now. May God help us. Those who don't know him, may God yeah. help us to know him because the yeah. testimonies are so evident that mm -hmm. Jesus Christ came, he died, and he rose again, and he's coming again. And those of us who know him too, may we be strengthened and encouraged, holding on to him. Mama, because said something so profound. The storms are over, the storm. What, what we are feeling now is just a, a bit of the wind to let us know that we will draw closer to God. If all things were roses, we wouldn't even, some of us, we would just relax. So he mm. wants us to draw closer to him. That's why we feel the wind of the storm. But the storm is over. Let us continue to walk with him. Said Sabre, he's, or is he here? he's preparing yeah. us because mm. there is a better place, a sweeter place. So let us hold on and he will see us through. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. You know, when you brought that song, the, the, the song that says he would rapture us through the clouds mm. and there our hearts will be at peace. It's so beautiful. You know, at, at some point I, I had to mature because my husband likes to talk about his catalogy too much. And sometimes it's, it's kind of a bit scary. So one time I was like, hey, what's going on? Like all the time. Yeah, I know I want, I want to go there, but so hearing you, this is too deep because you know, some of us didn't like to gallivant around revelations that much, but it, it's a bit scary. But as you hear it and as you hear about the bliss of the resurrected body and all that, I, I had to see how beautiful it is. God bless you so much. It's a day to look up to. Amen. Amen. Oh, Evelyn, don't go. You're closing as well. If the wages of sin is death and God mm. has a gift, mm. and that gift is life eternal, mm. then as the bride of Christ, he wants to present us without mm. heart mm. and without any wrinkle. So that the de degradation that was placed on us, the bondage of sin and death that was placed on us, 
Jesus Christ mm -hmm. says that it is finished. Mm -hmm. He has made sin and death powerless. Mm -hmm. If the victory that his honor, mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ um, has triumphed for us, is to work for us, mm -hmm. then let's look at this story that says that when people go to war, mm -hmm. the, the, the ones who win, who are the victors, have the power to disarm the ones who did not win. Then that means that when the white flag is raised by those opponents, mm -hmm. then the leader who is the Lord Jesus Christ will go out there into that army and disarm all of them, their generals and their captains, and make a public show of them. Mm -hmm. And then after they have surrendered and all the authority and all the power become Jesus Christ's own, mm -hmm. then it is finished becomes a reality. Mm -hmm. It is finished means that it was finished in the past. Mm -hmm. It is still finished in the present. Mm -hmm. And it remains finished in the mm -hmm. future. Uh -huh. He did not say, I'm finished. Oh. He said, it is yeah. finished. So, that which he said implies that he died once and for all. And he paid the price in full. That mm -hmm. is why when he cried out, it is finished. He was saying that. I have successfully completed from the mission for which I came. Mm. He accomplished. He won the captain of our hopes. That's he right. Christ, our royal master. Mm. He won the victory. And I want to go back to Mama Abigail's um, Tetelesta. Uh -huh. He is the savior. Uh -huh. And his final cry of victory when he died was that it is finished. It is the finished. last time he said he when he said to the Lester, mm -hmm. he was speaking the truth, Mama Abigail. It is finished. Glory, 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 hallelujah. And you know, mommy, we sing the song our uh, end the glory of the Lord. So it is it is finished as you said. It's not it's finished as saying the supplies have run out, but it is finished as you said, because the work has been glorified. Now we are enjoying the glory and in the time to come, the end, so whenever we sing that song, our, our captain of Israel's voice, our end, the glory of the Lord, that, that part, I just love it because sometimes in the Christian journey, we, we go through certain scenarios where we don't have the answers. Why is this happening? And then it reminds me that there is a glorious end. So I love that bit about the it is finished, it is finished that you were drumming home. There is the finished work now and there is the finished work then where we'll be saturated with the glory of God. I don't know, but for me, when I hear stuff like that, I just want to be in worship. I just want to be in worship. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Move out of Please we'll take your call. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you all. It's been a profound time. We have really learned a lot from each other. And I believe our listeners do have also been the lot to the glory of God. I want to agree with Becca about our responsibility mm -hmm. now that all these things have been accomplished for us. And there is this song that I loved when I was in high school. And it's so it's so relevant to me. Anytime I come across it, I I just know that God expects a lot of me. Mm -hmm. And I just want to sing it. It's by Edwin Young and Harry Stars. And the melody is by Robert Evans. I wonder how I given my best for Jesus, who died upon the cruel Think of his great sacrifice at Calvary. 
I know my Lord has said the best from me. How many are the laws that I have left there? How many are the chains I've held to free? I wonder, have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so much to me? The hours that I have wasted are so many. The hours I've spent for Christ so few. Because of all my lack of love for Jesus, I wonder if his heart is breaking. Oh, mercy, Lord. How many are the lost that I have lived in? How many of the chain of help to me? I wonder, have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so very much for me? Ah, mommy, we should enter you into a context so melodious, but very poignant. It is a, a very deep, deep you know, the lyrics just are thought provoking and it's very deep and demanding from us. Mm. So, in a nutshell, he has done so much for us. Mm -hmm. mm. So mm. much. Mm. Please. Mm. Nothing we will do will come up to what he has done for us. Let's put in our best. Mm. Our best, our very best. Mm. And the good news is that the Holy Spirit is there to help us. Yes. And let's yeah. yield to him and Amen. allow him to continue using us. Mm. One day when we meet in heaven, we will be happy to join the angelic choir to sing to his glory. May God help us oh. come for him and to make his death worthwhile. Amen. Mm. Amen. One day, mommy, God bless you. One day we will know of the depths of his love. Oh, for us. God bless you so much. Professor Carmen Ketia, Auntie Gladys Kennedy, she says, it is finished, means we are cursed free. Oh. And Elder Professor Carmen Ketia said, that everyone is enjoying the donations. The donation is proportional to each individual's interest in the death of Christ Jesus. Some don't care about his death. To them, they get small donations. So an interesting choice to that. And Professor Enketia says, brothers and sisters, the Easter Music Award goes to Apostle Wa Mamadi. <laughs> <laughs> that's <just> pro. <laughs> I, my, my husband says, well, maybe I think our generation needs to learn this song. It, it is very deep. Mm -hmm. And then Rose, Rose and Katie says, I think we need to talk about the Church of Pentecost songs and women contributions. Mumabi, thanks. Yes, sir. You're very right. Women empowerment to women. God bless you. God bless you. Mm -hmm. And Mama Abigail, we're going to take a prayer, please, from you. I want to appreciate all of you who are with us. And no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, know that, well, I, I, I look at 1 Corinthians 15, the apostle said, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. Mm -hmm. You are still in your sins. Then those who also have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we have all people most to be pitied, but in, it, it's not the end of our story. Our end is the glory of the Lord. So hang in there. The Holy Spirit is with you. Cheer up and know that God loves you. Mommy, if you could please pray with us then. As even as mommy, we are ending, we still want to acknowledge our first lady, Edith, and her son, Joshua, who are in mourning. But God, even in this season, gives us assurance that as he raised himself, so will he raise us, even in the last days, with the message of hope, regardless of what we are dealing with. Shall we pray? 
eternal Father, we are so grateful to you once again. Thank you. Thank you for your love, which is so great that you sent your only begotten son. Mm -hmm. Come and die. This excruciating, painful death on the cross for us. And Lord, you went through the suffering victoriously and you were able to finish it and therefore tell us that it's finished. Because of that, we have hope in your resurrection that what you have accomplished for us is so great and we are also beneficiaries to your glory and to your honor. Father, at this time we are praying, committing ourselves into your hand. Let us show our gratitude to the death and the resurrection of Christ by doing what you want us to do. Holy Spirit, empower each and every one of us to be able to send out the gospel message to everywhere, to bring dying souls to the saving knowledge of Christ. So that the work that you came to do on the cross will be fully accomplished in the fact that you have saved lives into your kingdom. Our selfless God, please help us. Help us and enable us, empower us, give us the grace, Lord, to take your death and your resurrection seriously and to bring people to your saving knowledge. We are asking at this time for everybody who is mourning that, mm -hmm. Lord, your resurrection hope will be upon them. We are praying, especially remembering our mama Edith and her son Joshua, that, Lord, your protection will continue to be upon them. Yes, Lord. Lord, let them hope in your resurrection and let them live to your glory and honor. Father, help us. Deliver us from evil. Lead us. Direct us. And let us make your death worthwhile. In Jesus' name, have we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. First Lady Rebecca Nage, God bless you so much. First Lady Harriet Okusi, Mama Debbie Engman, God bless you. Mama Evelyn Donko, God bless you. Mama Abigail, God bless you. And I just uh, want to salute you, Elder Samasayil, for what you do. Um, I want to acknowledge some special people because of Miracle, uh, Sister Doris Mensa for coming all this way just to do our hair. I appreciate you. Dignity Joyce Miranda, you had to go pick the cake for me. I appreciate you so much. Big Sis Roberta Osei, Mrs. Sis Osei of Oklahoma, uh, Dignity Doreen Kerab, Dignity Best, and all of you, so many wonderful messages. But I want to, Mommy, especially acknowledge Dignity Audrey Ansa. She is Miracle's second mother. And it's so interesting, she would always babysit her. And her mother too is Miracle's grandmother. They will always babysit her, it's so profound. So whenever I go to church, I thought I was gonna struggle babysitting instead of mommy, just sit down and they do it. Auntie Joyce and Maranga, they were always babysitting for me. So many people, I just wanna pause here and say, thank you all, God bless you all. And please have a blessed um, evening, all of you. And God willing, um, next week, we're gonna be looking at the topic of legacy so it's going to be a good time we're going to be talking about legacies so please have a pleasant evening and we will meet again god willing next week and please subscribe to us on youtube and join us on facebook and share our link elder sam is saying here god bless you god bless you all are listening so many people reach out to me that we don't see that they are with us we appreciate all of you god bless you so please we'll meet again thank you all my mothers god bless you bye God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.